All right, so we printed out quite a few prints and they're all inside the printer. And we can see there's quite a few of them. It is a little hard to tell how big they are on camera as I do have a really wide lens right now. But believe me, they are huge prints. And we can see that by looking at these smaller ones here, which are still pretty large, considering this is what a normal Benchy looks like. So yeah, pretty large prints here. And I do have to say, guys, I'm greatly impressed with the Giga as it does deliver on its promise printing big prints. So all these prints were printed in the 0.6 nozzle, which is what is installed on the head. But you also get four more nozzles, ranging from 0.4 to 0.1. So you get another 0.6 and a 0.8. So I decided to stick with 0.6 as I was making reasonable timing, and I did want to have a reasonable quality also. Could have went to 0.8 and make it, you know, print faster, but that's gonna be all up to you and what you're printing. So starting here with the small ones, this is the print that came with the printer. And you guys can see it turned out really good very uniform so this was already sliced that was included the thing that surprised me the most is how uniform all the layers were and that continued to happen with this nutcracker so it's functional and works very well the 0.6 nozzle does a great job on the walls as you guys can see very clean and you can kind of see the steps there in the layers so yeah overall a great print here also and those bolt spins perfectly in there it's tight so good tolerances also, we had this included, which is, I guess, like a little planter. Kind of hard to see on white, but also looks really good overall. Again, the walls are surprisingly nice. And we're going to see that throughout the prints. So the first print I printed on my own, which we sliced, was this headphone holder. And it turned out pretty well. It prints like this. And you guys can see the walls are really nice. I didn't use support, so we had a little droopiness from the back. But other than that, it was successful. And also we did print in the middle of the bed to see what kind of grooves we got, which are very small. You can't almost tell where they are. And this print took two hours and 35 minutes to print. So then we stepped it up to this frog. And <laughs> this is much larger. You guys can see my hand. And this thing turned out great. Very smooth, uniform layers. Also it was printed in the middle of the bed so we can see our intersections there with the beds. Very minor. But we can still see like this one's a little higher. This one's a little lower. So I can still adjust these beds to be more closer but yeah it's not bad and actually pretty tolerable considering the size of the sprint again you guys can see how smooth everything is it does look like i should have used a little more upper layers as we have some gapage here you can kind of see on the eye there but yeah other than that it turned out really good and yeah we're starting to print bigger which this frog here since it's a more solid print took 12 hours and 35 minutes which is not too bad for how large it is so the next print we got here is this bear and this thing looks really cool so we got a lot of holes so lots of retractions and just a lot of moving around and you guys can see this thing turned out really good there is a little bit of droopage here and there but overall i'm really impressed as this print did take a long time to print of 46 hours and 20 minutes again that had to do a lot with retracting and moving around as you guys can see there's a lot of holes so the bottom is not perfect it's a little rough because of the way this print is it's smooth where it's laying on the bed but then here we have overhangs and I didn't use supports and so it kind of drooped down so this could be probably better and we did have a little bit of some kind of string in here but it's not terrible and you can reach it all and clean it up so yeah and all the layers are really nice I did use about two kilograms of filament to print this and I actually had a change of two types of filaments you maybe can see it's like a little more clear here and then more white up here so around this area but yeah if you step back you can't really tell but yeah this was a pretty cool print also very fun to print and if you guys notice we're doing really good with printing really long prints and not having any failures which i did not experience at all with this printer which is quite incredible so the next print is definitely our most ambitious project is this face or bust of this statue this thing is quite large you can see my hand here so it's almost true to life but a bit smaller but it's getting there and this print is quite incredible as it not only printed very well we really didn't have much issues except for one which i'll talk about here in a second and it's not the printer's fault but this print took 57 hours and 57 minutes to print which is a very long time over two days and we used over three spools of filament for this print and by the way, the filament detector did a great job of detecting the end of the spool and pausing the print to change the new spool and then continue printing. So yeah, if we look at this print closer, we can see there's a lot of detail. Let's go ahead and look at the bottom and we can see it's quite clean. You can see our four beds intersecting there. Overall, very nice. And we stuck to the bill plates, no issues. And here we can see on our first spool, we were doing very, very well, very smooth back until we got to the second spool and that's where it started about right here and you can see we started having weird artifacting which is really interesting because it seems like it was all filament related as it wasn't even or something and we kind of see these same waves going up here 
for the second roll. Right about to here, where the neck starts, this filament ended and we started a new one and all of a sudden things got good again. So yeah, we just had a bad roll of filament looks like. That's the only explanation that I can think of. So we're gonna have a little bit of inconsistency here. Everything below and above is pretty much perfect. That's what it should be, obviously. But yeah, there's a lot of detail, guys. Even though, you know, this is not printed well. You guys can see this is a pretty detailed print. It looks really good. Lots of great details, even in this not so good areas but let's go ahead and go up here and you guys can see where it really gets good and you know the consistency is beautiful and the layers just go down so good as you guys can see very impressed with the whole print and we could have printed this even much more larger but you know be prepared to have a lot of filament for this kind of printing and also in hindsight i probably should have hollowed this model out that way it was more like a shell printing instead of <laughs> solid with infill inside you know uses quite a bit of filament the next two prints are in spiralized mode which is probably the funnest way to print on this printer because they're large and they're quick and the reason for that is there's just a few layers on the bottom and it's just one layer all the way around so they're hollow or like a very thin shell and so they don't take long to print so if we look at this rocket plane we can see the layers on it are beautifully put down i mean i would say almost excellent we do get a little bit of wobble on the top i can kind of feel it but overall very nice for how large this is and this is the full 1000 millimeters up so yeah pretty tall print and definitely this is really fun to print just kind of as like props or just decorations or whatever and so the plane only took half a spool of filament and about nine hours and 30 minutes to print which is not bad for you know the size and speaking of decorations here we have a pretty large i guess christmas tree in spiralized mode and this thing turned out great also it comes to a point the cooling did pretty well here for this point but yeah also very nice you can kind of see the lines a little bit and it's because i think it was scaled up so much and because they're contour lines there's like a pattern that shows up but it actually looks pretty good and this is a more of a silky filament and it looks really really good guys and it has a pretty large base i can't remember the size but you can see it goes almost end to end so yeah very large print also and maybe i can show you the bottom here of this behemoth and you can see exactly where the plates interchange right here and yeah honestly this one is really good you can almost not feel the the line except for a little bit right here which yeah it's pretty impressive for how large you can print on this kind of printer so who's this printer for? Well, I would say it's probably for hobbyists more than anything. Even though it is a large industrial feeling printer, it's still pretty basic in its design and its capabilities. But it's definitely quite unique and makes it very interesting for anyone that wants to print larger items or has a good use for it to print something like this. Or maybe you want to print four things at a time by getting three more nozzles. But I feel like for that, you might be better off with four smaller printers then this really huge printer they have to figure out where to put as it does take a lot of space now obviously its main strength is its build volume which is 800 by 800 and 1000 millimeters tall now we do have quite a bit of you know dead space around the build plate which has to be like that because of the design of this thing moving up and down we do get a direct drive extruder with good cooling and a nozzle that heats up all the way to 300 c our bed goes to 100 c with no issues and the reason for that is we have four power supplies that that run each one we also have a bed leveling which is really easy through the screen so there is some nuances involved in manually leveling this thing as that's a little tedious but once you get it pretty flat the out of bed leveling takes over and it's quite flawless as you guys saw the bottoms look great we also have linear rails for the y one on each side and also the x and that really shows up on the prints they're very precise and for the z we have these really thick rods four of them total two on each side we also have adjustments for the y and x belts and all our cables are very nicely managed with the chains even here going down the side we do have safety built in with a circuit breaker so we have all our normal features with wi-fi filament detection power loss resume spiralized printing and not to mention this printer can print 300 millimeters a second i actually stayed under that around 200 which seems to be the sweet spot and probably the biggest thing is the weight of this thing being 104 kilograms by itself that's about 230 pounds and that really shows because the frame is super solid and probably one of the most compelling things about this printer is how well it's built we do have four adjustable feet one on each corner 
Now you can level this thing out. Easy access to a USB port and an emergency switch to shut it off. And we have this connection here going to our screen, which is great. It is quite large. I actually connected it to this frame here. Normally goes up here, but yeah, it's quite easy to use. Elegoo makes it easy as it's clipper based. And probably the best thing about this thing is that when connected to the fluid browser, you can control everything from the back end and monitor it and whatnot else. So yeah, it's a good screen. It works great. You can move it down if you need to, just clips right out. And obviously all your controls here for the printer. So is this printer for everyone? I would probably say no, as you do need to have the room and you also need the reason. Do you want to print very large prints or do you need to? But if you do need to, I don't think there's anything else on the market that's this unique and offers this much with this kind of construction for its price. But if you are that person, then I think you'd be very happy with this thing as it does have a lot of potential just being a DIY machine. There are some quirks with this thing. One being the filament doesn't feed very well when it's higher up, but of course you could use that little roll and feed from the bottom up. And also I found this sensor here that senses the bed not always being very accurate. But other than that, not really much to pick at the Giga except for maybe it being a little too loud. So right now it's just idling and it's not too bad, but when it starts printing, the fans kick in, all the power supplies kick in and it gets quite loud. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button.